Welcome back, everyone. So it is all of our history so that we can all have a better future. And this morning we are taking a deeper look at how our roots here in Florida for a better understanding of our past. So you drive down Hexford Drive or you go across the ferry when it's running. You see the signs for Kingsley Plantation. Did you know it's the oldest remaining plantation in Florida? News for Jack's reporter Lena Pringle takes us back in time with a look at life on this Marsh Island plantation at the mouth of the St. Johns River. Young, black, and stolen into slavery. This is where Anna Kingsley, an African woman who became a slave, went on to become a slave owner herself. It's a complex part of more than 200 years of history preserved right here on Kingsley Plantation. It is a beautiful place, yes, uh, but it is also uh, a horrible place. Kingsley Plantation is a piece of living, breathing history nestled on Fort George Island. The plantation spanned about 600 acres. It's where Zephaniah and Anna Kingsley's family lived from 1814 to 1837. Zephaniah was a, a white European uh, trader, merchant. Uh, he, he traded and sold uh, a variety of commodities from cotton to human beings. Uh, Anna, his wife, uh, was an African uh, woman from Senegal, what, we, what is now today Senegal. Uh, he purchased her at a slave auction in Cuba when she was very young uh, and married her. Anna Kingsley, one of Zephaniah's four wives, would go on to run this plantation by herself in his absence, something that was unheard of for a black woman at that time. A remarkable act of survival. She, through much of her own sheer force of will, uh, established uh, a life uh, here that was not something that, that the average enslaved person, especially an enslaved woman, would have, would have been able to uh, accomplish. Walking on Kingsley Plantation is like taking a journey back in time. Witness trees like these tell a story of the past without ever using words. We know they're important because uh, here at Kingsley Plantation, the enslaved people buried their dead, uh, oriented around one of these trees. Um, to me, it's a very powerful symbol uh, that this tree is still alive. This tree was, was there. It was important to the enslaved population that lived here, but it is something that you can still come and see today as a living link to show this was not that long ago. This was something that we, uh, we need to understand and learn from. All the structures here are original from the wood on the barn to the seashells in the slave cabins. The history is etched in every corner, a complex history used as a living lesson. We try to give voice uh, to the people who traditionally have been voiceless. So very much of what we do here is to better understand uh, the various complicated relationships, uh, uh, try to learn about as many of the people as we can who lived here and toiled here a difficult, painful past wrapped in nature's beauty. Kingsley Plantation serves as more than just a history lesson. Only through understanding our past can we build a better future. In Fort George Island, Lena Pringle, Channel 4, The Local Station. Wow, what a story. Yeah, so many interesting facts. I just was so amazed that in the 1800s, somebody was able to once be a slave to then becoming a slave owner. They had a polygamous relationship. She was one of four wives. They had biracial children. It was just a lot going yeah. on in the 1800s. And it's interesting because I've been to the plantation. I didn't even know that history. The one thing I did note about the location is it's right there by the water. And they, they talked about how hot it was when they actually were there mm -hmm. and the mosquitoes and how dangerous it was just to be outside, which is where they live. Yeah, and if you've ever been to Kingsley Plantation, you know, you drive all the way through that like yeah. deep wooded area uh -huh. and to know that the enslaved people had to plow that land, cut down those trees, build around a marsh, get mm -hmm. seashells. Yeah, I just, I don't know how yeah. they did it. But when you read her personal story, I mean, the contradictions, and it sounds like a simple response, but you go, huh? Yeah, it's, it's wild. And then it's you think wild. it's really interesting because at that time, Florida was under Spanish law. So slavery wasn't considered a genetic condition or based on your race. It was something that they encouraged people to buy themselves out of. So the slaves that she did own, they were working towards their freedom and they would be let go. So it was never something that was like based on genetics. And then once that shifted in the country is when they ended up leaving and they took their biracial children and moved on. So. Have to know our history. Gotta Thank know you your Lena. history. What a yeah, time. Sure. These past two hours have been one giant history lesson. Yeah. <laughs>